Hi guys, and welcome to another How To Monday. Indeed, so this week we're going to focus on pitching and particularly Adam's technique on how he um, would go about a pitch shot on the golf course. So as always, let's get going. Right, so first of all, talk us through how you would approach a pitch shot from scratch. So as you walk up to the pitch shot. So from scratch for me, it's very, um, very basic really is I don't tend to do anything too funky with my stance I'm not an open stance person I'm very square ball position fairly centered maybe just forward to center sometimes depending on what sort of shot I want to hit okay. but most of the time it will be pretty centered and um, then for me I just flare my front foot slightly slightly preload my my left leg but only very slightly mm -hmm. maybe thinking maybe five percent for me and then from there, I use the clock face yeah. quite a lot. So going through this, I'm gonna do a quarter, a half and a three quarter. So I'm really feeling that my left arm governs where this swing goes. Yeah. I'm very much feeling that I can govern where my left arm is and not really worry too much about where the club is pointing at this point. Because if I'm worried about where the club is pointing, I'm worrying about wrist set and bits and pieces yeah. and, and it just doesn't work. So I feel like if I can point my left arm and left hand at wherever I want to go to, then I feel like I can judge point. the judge the swing lengths accordingly from there. Perfect. Okay, so how many wedges do you carry in your bag? So I've got two scoring wedges and a pitching wedge. Yeah, okay. So I carry 58, 52, and then straight into pitching, pitching wedge. wedge. So three wedges, you've got three or four swing lengths. So four, four including full? Yeah. So yeah. you go quarter, half, three quarter, and full? Yeah. So obviously that's then 12 different distances. Very rarely will I hit 58 and 52 full. for the full swing. Yeah, and yeah. and that's and again, so that's fine. So you take that out, so that's 10 different distances you can hit the yeah. ball with just their very simple swings. Yep. And if you added 9 iron and 8 iron into that, when you have shorter pitch and run type shots. Yeah, and I tried to go to three wedges plus a pitching wedge the other year, and I found that I had a lot of swings that went a very similar distance. Yeah. And for me, it just came down to what height I wanted to hit it in. So if I want to hit it in lower, 52, yeah. and, I, and then judge the swing length accordingly. Yeah. If it needs to go in a bit higher, 58. And then if we start to having to go with wind and bits yeah. and pieces, then we go with pitching wedge, 9-9, nine, nine, and so on. Okay, cool. So let's see you hit some, yep. have a chat through it, yep. and go from there. Right, okay, so we're now in a position where we've got the two cameras. We can have a good look and see yep. these from both angles. So talk us through, first of all, what you describe as that half length swing. So half would be the shortest one or would quarter be the shortest Quarter would be the shortest okay. one. So, so quarter would be? Sort of mm, between 25 to and 22 on the clock face. Okay. Somewhere in that region. So about so seven or eight o'clock if we're looking straight face on to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna run through quite low. Obviously we've got a flag that's X amount of yards away. Yeah. I won't get it there with that swing. No, and that's important as well when you're practicing. Because yeah, I could manufacture that. Yeah. I could get into a point where I could make a quite a short backswing and accelerate quite a lot and get it to that target. However, with my pitching action and the way I do it, I tend to want to try and keep the tempo very smooth mm -hmm. and rely on and getting a good contact. Because yes. for me, at this end of the, the scoring shots, it's about contact, it's yeah. about my traction on the face is good I can control the spin and the and yeah. height that I get a lot easier yes so yeah it's never about that speed no it's just about matching those swing lengths up exactly if you've got a fixed target out there on the range don't feel like you have to hit everything out at it you know these are going to end up short of this green that we're looking at from yep. down the line so don't worry about it just run through trust that swing length There you go, and that's going to be such a functional golf shot on the course, yeah. isn't it? That's going to be so functional. Yeah, and okay. it's just it's just one of those shots that, again, hopefully on, from this sort of distance, it's a weird distance, like it's about 30 yards that yeah. I'm going to hit that. So it's a weird distance that the fact that you're, you're being quite, you can be quite a fiddly shot, really. Yes. So it allows you with this shorter swing length to feel like I can still be quite positive with the yeah. shot rather than really get back here and having to maybe slow down. Ooh, what short. we hear quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. You get this, I'm going to take back here and then you can see this quite cut off follow through where they're trying to judge speed as it comes in and comes out. Yeah, it makes it much easier. Makes it really hard work. Okay, so let's just run through those other two swing lengths and then up to the full one. 
so this would be a half swing, so roughly nine o'clock on the club face, on the clock face with your left arm. Good. Again, you can see that follow through. There's a complete turn of the body in there. If you just hold that follow through position for me, just play that again. You can see, guys, from this angle, there's a full shoulder turn, hips, tummy, everything's pointing at the target. Back foot's off the floor, got a bit of rotation in there. And that's key. Key to this swing is to make sure you've got a controlled start, controlled top of the back swing, controlled follow through. And yeah. it's re repetitive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's the thing for me as well. The reason I don't stand open and do all these bits and pieces, and personally, I, you're the same, I would have said, mm don't teach it that way to other people is that I don't want it to be confusing when it gets to this end of the bag it just needs to be a short version yeah, of, of full your full swing exactly yeah. so keep it simple keep it simple there you go okay so let's see that three quarter one then please so we're looking what 10 11 o'clock on the club face on the clock face here yeah And that's about as hard as you're going to hit that 60 degree wedge or 58 degree yeah. wedge that you carry. Yeah, so, so. it's as hard as, hard as I'd want to hit it. I feel like once I start to swing harder than that, yeah. at those scoring wedges, I tend to lose the ability to flight it. I tend to lose the strike at times. Um, so yeah, for me, those two bottom end wedges will only ever go to three quarters. Good, excellent. I think that's about everything, isn't it? Yeah. For that? So you just repeat that with the three wedges you carry, yep. potentially the nine and the eight iron, depending on the shot that you've got in front of you. Yes, definitely. And it's as simple as that. And it's one of those that, if you're gonna do this, and I would say, we've both run through this, just go to go to your practice ground at the, at the club, or wherever yep. you can practice, and hit a lot of shots with that swing feeling, and then just take like a, an average of, of where you're gonna start from, and get an average of where it's gonna go. Yep. You don't need to every ball to that exact yardage because no. you're not a robot it's and you're also not going to you're not going to have that exact yardage on the golf no. course you're going to have it within an area so get that average and then know that which percentage shot is going to be best to suit the shot that you've got on the golf course exactly guys as always thank you very much for watching if you want to comment below any questions any thoughts you've got on that pitching that would be great yeah and guys if you haven't done already the circle in between us in a minute that will be the subscribe button to the channel that will get you all of our content free of charge as soon as we upload it Indeed, and um, if you also click the subscribe button, there's a bell icon down there as well, and that'll let you know when we go live, which we're going to do a heck of a lot more of, yep. because it's good fun, and it's good interaction with you guys. Definitely. So as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Cheers, guys.